So you want to defeat racism, but you're hitting a bit of a snag. The traditional route of electing proactive officials is too slow, and regular old-fashioned sit-ins and boycotts are not as cathartic as you'd want them to be anymore. You feel yourself slowly descending into madness, and you bulk at the idea of yet another year going by, acutely aware that somewhere out there, a Billy Bob or a Becky exists that doesn't doesn't sympathize with the, the plight of the non-white gender, non-conforming indigenous persons of color. You grow timid in your realization. There are those who don't care enough about you specifically as a non-white person, but also in a more broad sense, your entire race. And so you begin to wonder, what ever can be done? You're angry morally outraged, and that op-ed from Medium just informed you that no matter what you do, or how you do it, or why you do it, you are on the right side of history because of the melanin content of your skin. Luckily, you Google the words how to defeat racism, and up pops my little handy guide, a step-by-step -step checklist, and an answer to all of your possible inquiries on just just what to do about your pent-up frustrations with the order of the current day. <laughs> Certainly, it should be understood that a term initiated into the common vernacular will have altered itself in the due course of time, due to social standards as well as the rise in the predominance of academia, understanding of such things as complicated as human anthropological reconcilement within itself and the bridging divide of cultures as we know them today. If you're confused, let me assure you that was word salad for the times they have a changed and as a result, so must our definitions. Namely, the word racism itself. There is a certain level of confusion that follows it everywhere it is used. Some people make the mistake of simplifying it to simply its current dictionary definition, and think that excludes them from the systemic oppression constructed around skin tones and the like, simply because they don't harbor any racial prejudices themselves personally. But we all know that that's not the case. Therefore, in order to make arguments easier to win against said individuals, the word racism must must be altered from something to be applied to individuals on an individual basis born from genuine prejudices and hatred to something that can be broadly applied on a systemic basis, yet still retain enough flexibility to be mass applied to any and all things, foreign and domestic, all of the time. Without a racial overhaul of definitions, it becomes incredibly more difficult to make arguments such as why white people being concerned about black people looting is racist, or that there happens to even be an argument to be made regarding white supremacy inside of the tech industry. Where's the money, Lebowski? Oh. Juneteenth may have come and gone already, boys and girls, but it is always a good day to pay reparations to people who have never so much as suffered a broken leg, much less the woes of slavery in their lifetime, from people who, who, let's be honest, can be placed on a spectrum where, at worst, they are six generations removed from what were legal slave owners at the time, and at best, came over here without many prospects well after the end of the Civil War. But never mind that. Here are all their PayPal links, their Cash App handles. Fuck an Amazon wish list will do. Give, give, give until it hurts, and then keep giving because damn it, you owe your reparations. There is a disadvantaged person out there who needed your money more than you did, probably. Suck it up, Buttercup. <laughs> You're on the right side of history if you do it. And isn't that just worth every little penny? This one might sound a little underwhelming, I understand, compared to everything else that we've discussed this far, it seems like one of those bursting dam meets duct tape scenarios, but hear me out. Band-aids and crayons for all possible skin tones that a person can have. Genius, right? <laughs> MLK would be proud with how far the movement has come and the progress being made in the image of his dream. In the criminal justice system. The dedicated detectives who investigate vicious felonies are members of an elite squad. These are their stories. 
Because we're fighting fire with fire, and merely the association of one person to another due to traits similar in both parties is enough to condemn them, a cab, I guess, as in all cops are bastards, and all policing forces should henceforth be disbanded and or abolished or defunded. This includes the Lego police, just as much as the actual police. The Fortnite police can also take a hike. And don't even don't even get me started on the fictional police. The holy fictional police. I threw it on the ground. I ain't gonna be part of this system. I can't think of anything that isn't a bigger obstacle in our society to its improvement other than inanimate statues erected in the honor of figures from history with an entire lifetime of achievements, horrible actions, letters, quotes, and diary entries for people to hyper-scrutinize decades later on. For me, this happens to be one of, if not the most crucial steps in undertaking the utter destruction of racism in the current day. There is no greater obstacle to the cause. Nothing is insurmountable as mobile statues crafted in the image of long dead individuals, obviously. Christopher Columbus certainly should be taken down, but you have to think bigger than that. If we're going to destroy racism, we have to go for the jugular or simply give up. George Washington for one is a top tier member of the people who I think of when I think of racism and slavery and generally intolerable human beings who violated human rights and such. And that's not to mention Ulysses S. Grant, the Union general who defeated the South during the United States Civil War. He can take a timber off of his marble pedestal as well. And just to make the statement even more impactful, we should be including Hans Christian Hay, the slavery abolitionist himself, on this list. Yes, lumberjack that guy straight to the sawmill and full-on repurpose his sculpture medium. I don't give a crap. We need to defeat racism and we need to be extra sure we do it thoroughly, right lads? There will be no reminders that there was any, any, any inclination of racism in our history. No siree. Hate me, hate me, still trying to replace me, chase me, chase me. Tell me how you the next thing to be done is to work towards replacing or eliminating iconic representations of POC in contemporary media. These are figures such as your Aunt Jemima's, your Uncle Ben's, your Mrs. Butterworth's, your Apu's. And that is something to be expanded to all things perceived as underlyingly racist caricatures. This step should be taken in conjuncture with the abundance of claims that are made regarding the fact that there currently exists not enough representations of people of color in contemporary media, never mind the various film industries around the world that exist outside of the United States. <laughs> These are the type of arguments that tend to come up in the event that you've come across one of those tragically racist head cases who's dissatisfied with one of their characters being recast with a person of color because of my hypocrisy. Furthermore, this step encompasses replacement as well, as you'll want to take not just live action non POC representations of characters out of the public view altogether, but also it is imperative that you remove their voices from said representation in media as well, especially in cases where the skin color of the representatives voice does not match their fictional made-up character. Not only shouldn't we have non-POC individuals voicing POC characters altogether, we shouldn't have, under any circumstances ever, at all, have a white writer creating any people of color characters in any capacity. This will mitigate the amount of POC representation in media wholesale altogether, feeding your argument about the lack of POC representation in contemporary media and creating a vicious feedback loop in which there is no escape from. Therefore, you can always win. We need to take it to the next level, obviously, because there are still words out there that are representative of a reality steeped in racism, my friends. We need to decolonize our everyday language, don't you know? And the best way to do this is to change all of the names of everything ever, even if the connection to racism is vague, unclear, and at times truncated apparently. So that's school names after historically racist figures. Get them out of here. Streets. The word master to describe bedrooms and bathrooms in the house intended for the head of said household usage. Fuck that noise. And of course the Dixie Chicks gotta go. Yeah, they get in the X too. I'm sorry guys. 
I don't make the rules. This is just how it needs to be in order for the country to finally heal. Come here. Bye, Felicia. As everyone knows, the absolute best way to learn from history is to utterly erase it from all of existence. Pretend it didn't happen turn a blind eye. Thus, it is of the utmost importance that we eliminate any and all examples of anything marginally racist from the record so as to ensure a downward statistical trend in all things racist. As we all know, book burning and record destroying has historically been correlated with peaceful relationships between demographics and in academia is looked upon favorably by scholars and academics alike. However, the utter erasure doesn't just stop with episodes of beloved TV shows or the destruction of statues. How could it? It transcends trivial pop culture and monuments and the abolition of museums entirely, my friends. What better way to disabuse us of our racist notions than by forgetting them entirely? Honestly, I ask you that. You shall not grow as a species. <laughs> No, if you want to rectify racial tensions, the simplest way to go about conquering that specific social demon is to fight fire with fire, obviously. An eye for an eye. No need to concern yourself if the whole world happens to fall blind in the pursuance of your goals. Your goals don't focus on the greater good that can be brought to humanity and society as a whole, merely on the gratification that can be bought with returning a slight in-kind and the advantages that this can bring to your specific racial group. Revitalizing racial tensions can be achieved in a plethora of manners, chiefly in simply making the conscientious effort to racially discriminate amongst the races. And so we hearken back to a time when the races were treated unequally under the eyes of the law and in personal endeavors. Let's not beat around the bush here. Racism can be utterly devastated in this country simply in flat out segregating the races. How long's the uh, blackout going for? Till 8 p.m. Okay, so I have to wait till 8 basically? Uh, what? you're welcome to like hang out in the perimeter area. Well, the thing is, I'm, I'm half Italian, half Colombian, so do I get a pass to get in there or? Well, this space is right now held for just black folks. Oh, just black, okay, yeah. so. Full black, you're saying? Um, if you have black ancestry or if you um, if you have experienced oppression because you are black, then you can enter this space. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. But if you needed more specific procedurals to adhere to, I have taken the liberty of accounting for a few. In the allotment of financial support, such as scholarships and grants for the exclusive use of people of color. Furthermore, this can be achieved by ex exclusively exercising diversity hiring practices in all aspects. Because, as we all know, a person's merit is not the sum of their capabilities and skill sets. Their diverse inherent traits, however, are all that you should know about an individual before making any decisions about placement in the job market. Next is the efforts to be made on the part of the supply and demand portion of the chain of industry. Consumers can make concerted efforts to use exclusively POC-owned businesses over any other, purely on the basis that they just happen to be POC-owned and nothing else. At the same time, suppliers can ensure that they do their part by mandating designated spaces for people of color businesses. In the same vein of ensuring that some people are more equal than others, the utter defeat of racism can be achieved in the issuance of special exemptions to diverse individuals, including but not limited to pandemic-specific guidelines and regulations that could keep us all alive. At the end of the day, I suppose if all else fail, you could always instigate a full-on race war. Listen closely. Here's a little lesson in trickery. 